Greetings demons and welcome to Warhammer Weekly episode 6 and this is a much quieter week than we've had in previous, well the previous 5 so this might be a little bit shorter or it might be just as long as ever because I do have a little bit of a rant towards the end of the video but in any case let's just jump into it. Not the leader of a cult, rabbit with sex. But first as always we're going to quickly just go over my pickups for this week and there's only actually one but it is a big one and that is the Chaos Space Marines. I'm not going to be able to get this on camera am I? Um, boarding Patrol. So uh, this is of course the box that comes with Abaddon and that is kind of the main thing that I got it for. I'm just, I'm just going to adjust the camera one second. Ah oh, this is stupid. Um, you get to see my keyboard now. Um, <laughs> but yeah uh, it's the Chaos Space Marine Boarding Patrol. It comes with 10 Legionnaires, 20 Cultists, and Abaddon, and I've been needing all of these for a little while. Not necessarily 20 Cultists, but I've been needing Cultists in general, and uh, yeah, it, it it was a good pickup. I managed to get from a friendly local game store, um, which, there we go, yeah, shout out Gemini and Huddersfield if you're interested, but um, yeah, I got it for this. I got this for like £63 or something, which I mean, it's 75 normally and I think it's like 80 something on um, the Games Workshop website so I mean I think I got a pretty good deal but yeah Arcs of Omen I'm really interested in the chaos side of Arcs of Omen even down to the actual story the actual books the lore it's really cool so uh, yeah this is my first Arcs of Omen thing uh, my first actual big box um, like combo pack of you know sprues if you don't want to include the uh, Oh, what is it actually called? One of the starter sets. One of the, the uh, Tyranid, not Tyranid, the um, Necron versus Space Marine starter sets. I can't remember which one it is. But, uh, yeah. Honestly, I'm, I'm very excited to actually get this built. Um, I, Abaddon, his, his sprue is ridiculous. And I am worried that I'm going to mess it up badly. But, yeah. Abaddon, really cool model. Uh, the Legion is really neat. Um, and the Cortis are something that I really do enjoy. I have a lot of Cortis models in general. It's good to finally have the regular cultists. So, uh, yeah, very excited to get this built up. And, uh, yeah, very happy with the price as well. It's probably also worth pointing out that I did go ahead and get the weekly or monthly model, sorry. Um, which is... If I can actually get it out of the box. Um, it is a jackal. So, yeah, I think I've already spoke about this in like, the last week or the week before's um, video. But, uh, yeah, you get a jackal. It's a very neat little cultist model for corn, and uh, I'll probably run it in some way with the rest of my uh, cultists, but I don't know. It's a very neat model, though. I do really like it. I like the posing and everything. And it was free, so I can't complain. And starting off with the first topic, we have the Echoes from the Warp. A new threat arises, and this is a little teaser clip sort of thing, which is really interesting because it shows in the eye of a Tyranid... A Terminator. And to me and to a lot of other people in the community, that can only really mean one thing, and that would be something relating to Space Hulk. And if that is the case, I'm very excited. The idea of a new Space Hulk game is amazing to me, especially with everything happening with Arx Vermin currently. I would absolutely love to see a new Space Hulk game. If you don't know about Arx Vermin, no spoilers. But there are currently a bunch of new, you know, Space Hulks just flying around, um, being piloted by various factions right now. It would be really cool if, as an extension of the current body, body actions gameplay of Arcs of Omen, we also get a Space Hulk game, which kind of shows the other sides of, you know, the conflict. It would be very, very cool, especially if it then leads to more story um, aspects and stuff like that. I'd be very, very interested in that. And it's looking like it might be possible. It could also mean we are getting new Tyranid models in general, as well as new Terminator models, which both of which are very much, you know, overdue, to say the least. When it comes to Terminators especially, the fact that we're still working with original Firstborn models, we, we need an update. Even if it's not to Primaris, just an update in general for Terminators would be amazing. And Tyranids are some of the oldest models currently available on Warhammer. So, realistically, either of those getting an update is an absolute win for the community. But, 
realistically, I'm I'm just excited for whatever this is. This is really interesting to me. Anything including Terminators is always gonna be good, and it being Tyranids versus Terminators, even even better. I, I love that. But uh, yeah, that's everything I have for the Echoes from the Warp and New Threat Rises trailer, I guess. Now, moving on to something that I haven't actually discussed in any previous episodes, the old world. So this is essentially, you know, Warhammer Fantasy, so to speak, but the new version of it. Obviously, AOS has been that for a while, but we are going to be getting this alongside AOS 40k, 30k, and uh, the various other minigames that we have available. And uh, yeah, we have a bunch of new models and uh, parts and stuff like that. Showing off different armor and weapons and accessories and stuff like that, which is very cool. So, I'm just going to go through it as the actual article goes through it. So, we have some very nice looking new knight helmets. Uh, we've got like antlers, we've got like a little bird person, bird person, we've got a little bird um, attachment, we've got a little dragon, which I do really like that dragon, it's very cute. A bunch of different shield designs, which are all pretty standard shields and stuff. Overall, like most of. Uh, most of all, world stuff is very classic fantasy, like true fantasy, which is always good to see. When it comes to melee weapons, we have a very nice axe, a few different sword designs, which some of these are very, very neat. I could definitely see some of these getting implemented into uh, 40k for various power swords and stuff, and the axe as well, power axe and stuff. I'm very excited to see what comes of old world in terms of how compatible it'll be with other Warhammer aspects. Uh, I'm sure AOS, you'll be able to implement most things very easily, but I'm interested in seeing how much this can actually be implemented into 40k. Uh, and then we also have a bunch of other accessories, including some spears, which have very interesting like scarab markings. Um, we've got scorpions, we've got little beetles, of very, uh, yes, most of them are scarabs, but uh, yeah, we've got a little staff with some skulls on it and bones on it. A shield that looks very much like the uh, Primaris Captain. You know the one I'm on about. <laughs> Um, that has the little skeleton on it. You got like what I can only describe as an elven sword, an elven sphere, s- sphere, spear. So uh, yeah, overall very, very neat. But yeah, old world is something that is very interesting to me, just because I'm probably not going to get into it. I say that I didn't say. I also said I wasn't going to get into AOS, and here I am. But uh, yeah, old world is definitely something that's interesting to me, just for is it going to be compatible with other elements of 40k AOS, you know, 30k. Like, can we use parts from this for that? And uh, honestly, so so far from what we've seen, I'm I'm very interested in just seeing the kit bash potential. But uh, yeah, that is it for everything from Old World. Very very cool. And moving over into 40k with a very major reveal, we now have Commander Dante Primaris. And honestly, I'm not a huge fan of Blood Angels in general. I really like this model though. Dante had a really cool model to begin with. I actually have no issues with his original model, other than the fact it's Firstborn. This is Primaris Dante, and he looks absolutely phenomenal. So, yeah, the perfect, like, golden armor, the uh, Mask of Sanguinius is awesome, the axe is amazing, and it's just... Oh, everything is just carried over directly from the Firstborn model. Um, Just some things have been upgraded to fit more into the Primaris art style. So things like the bolt gun seems to be about the same, just with a few slight modifications. The axe itself is the exact same as the original first ball model, just with a longer handle, which is always cool to see. The jetpack even looks... Uh, it's, it's upgraded, clearly, but it's very much the same style. I just... I love how close they kept it to the original first ball style, the first ball model, despite making it Primaris. Like, we actually have this comparison of the height difference and you know the primary model is so so much bigger but they still look the same like they, they look comparable and it's really cool to see that that's carrying over like the general aesthetic is carrying over it's very very cool to me i do really like that the base that he's got as well with the little bit of rubble and the little uh, space marine helmet very very neat but uh yeah this might be one of those models i just get to paint because you know, I'd say I'm not a Dark Angels player. I don't really care for Dark Angels in general. This is a cool model, though. I really do enjoy it. And, uh, yeah, it might be nice to just paint up a Golden Boy. That, that That's really it. That's really what it comes down to. Alternatively, I'm sure, like, I could probably modify it into some other, like, non-specific character if I really wanted to. I don't know. It's probably a bit too big of a base. I probably, probably could get by with calling it, like, a captain or something. But, uh... 
yeah, Dante Primaris. You gotta love it. I I'm a huge fan of this. He also um somewhere in this article it says that he's actually been given a better role. He's no longer Commander Dante. He's actually like <laughs> High Clark or something. It's like it's ridiculous. Like his new title. Where is it? Uh, da, 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 da. I don't know if it's actually in the article. I know he has a new title though that he was given. So uh, I'm trying to find it. It's not me. Well, in any case, um, where is it? It's in this article somewhere. I read it earlier. In any case, he has a new role. He has a new uh, rank. So uh, that's very very cool. But uh, yeah, Dante in Primaris, very very neat. Moving over into the boarding patrols, we actually have three new ones this time around, which, uh, yeah, I'm starting to get a little bit tired of these. We have so many at this point, but uh, at the same time, very, very neat to look at. So uh, starting off, we have the Adeptus Sororitas, the Sisters of Battle, and in this we have, uh, what's the named character? Canoness. Is that it, we have a Canoness joined by five Celestial um, Sacrosants, Nine Sisters Repentia, and uh, Repentia Superior, ten Battle Sisters that can be built as domin Dominions or Celestians. I hate all of these names. Uh, and one Cherub as well, which is always nice to see. But uh, yeah, it's a pretty standard Sister Battle Box. I'm not really all that interested. I have my Sister's uh, Kill Team, and I'm probably going to stick with that for the most part in the future. But uh, yeah, it's a, it's a good little set. I... I if you're a sisters player, it's a good little set for getting more general units. Just like it, it's it's good, but I, I don't really care for it. And in the same vein, Adeptus Custodes, it's essentially the same thing. They they have so few models. Like the variety is is always non-existent. But uh, this includes uh, da, 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 da. what actually is included in this? Does it actually list it? Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, no. Captain General Trajan Valoris, of course. Three Alaris Custodians and five Custodian Guards. So, very simple. If you're a Custodians player, this is pretty standard. You'll probably have all these models already. But uh, if you don't, or if you're wanting to get into Adeptus uh, Custodies, not the worst uh, set ever. I just... I just don't care. And, unfortunately, I have to continue my lack of caring for the Thousand Suns uh, Boarding Patrol, even though... The Thousand Sons are one of my favourite factions within Warhammer in general. They're my favourite Chaos faction, aesthetically, at the very least, and in terms of their lore, I do love them. But their boarding patrol is just 20 Rubric Marines and uh, 2 Chaos Spawn, which is stupid. And, like, obviously, with Chaos Spawn, you can't separate out the sp uh, sprue. You can only run one Chaos Spawn in a Thousand Sons army, so you basically just get one extra model for no reason. You're getting 21 playable models, you know, 20 Rubric Marines and a Chaos Spawn, and then you just get another Chaos Spawn that you can just do whatever you want with, I guess, but you can't actually play it. And I think that's my biggest issue is the fact that it's like, this is just 20 of the same guy, essentially, with two really cool models that you can only play one of. It just, I d it's not for me, unfortunately, this Thousand Suns box. I'm not going to be getting it, I don't think. But, uh,. You know, if if you're wanting to just get a ton of Rubric Marines or whatever else, like, th I mean, that's the reason. And so, if, if you're trying to get into Thousand Suns, this is a really good box just for building up a ton of Rubric Marines because, you know, that's your main troop. But if you're someone who's more into, you know, Scarab Occult Terminators or whatever else, this isn't for you. And moving into even more rants with some heresy content. Heresy Thursday brought us 12 more Contempt to Dreadnought upgrade packs. We've already discussed the first six. And, uh, yeah, I'm just... I'm, there's, there's something that I need to get into towards the, towards the end of this. But first off, on the Loyalist side, we have the Space Wolves, Blood Angels, Iron Hands, Ultramarines, Salamanders, and Raven Guard, which all look phenomenal. They're all great carapaces. The, the you know they they look great. It's the it's the torso and head as always, and uh, yeah, they they all look aesthetically really good. I'm especially really interested in that Raven Guard one, um, though I'll get into a reason why I'm just not going to be getting it. 
in a moment. The Alpha Legion one's also very good. Uh, we haven't even gotten to that yet. Sorry, it's because I'm looking at the picture, and the picture includes all of them. But uh, they also have the Night Lords, Ward Eaters, Death Guard, Thousand Sons, Word Bearers, and Alpha Legion uh, for the Traitor Legions. And, uh, yeah, I as I say, I really like pretty much all of these. The Thousand Sons one is amazing. Alpha Legions is amazing. I quite like Raven Guards. Um, just... In general, they're all so very good, but the biggest problem, and there's two problems, I'll get into the more important one in a second, is that because these are just torsos, they have certain aesthetics that aren't going to look correct. Like, just for example, with specifically the Raven Guard one, which obviously my, you know, Loyalist army is at least currently Raven Guard themed, the Raven Guard upgrade has the little riveted, like, patterning in it. But that won't carry over into the rest of the model, because it's just the torso. So you're basically going to have just this random bit of detailing that looks like it should carry on, that just won't. And I feel like that is so pointless to even have, and obviously in the original full resin model for the Raven Guard um, Contempt of Dreadnought, that covers the entire design. That is a consistent aspect of the entire thing, having the little riveted striping. It's really stupid of me stupid to me, sorry, that they would continue these as uh, design aesthetics that are supposedly going to carry on, but then obviously they can't because they're using the plastic kits, which are generic. It's the same for, like, the word bearers. They are covered in runes, but then it's just going to be the torso and nothing else. There's, there's so many things like this. Like, you have all this great aesthetic work for just the torso and head, and then everything else is going to be generic. And I just, I don't understand it personally. It makes no sense to me. But, uh, yeah, they look great. I can't I can't say they look bad. I just don't think that in the grand scheme they're going to look all that good, most of them, when you just put them on a generic body. And it's really unfortunate. Especially when we've seen the resin versions of these, where it was the full model. Where it was essentially everything except for the arms, I'm pretty sure. And, yeah, those were beautiful. Those were great. They were just made out of resin, which was the issue. And this is still made out of resin. You know, these... These carapaces, these bodies, are still going to be resin. So you miss, you're mixing resin and plastic still. So, yeah, I don't know. For me, the Elf Legion one might be a pickup. But even then, like, I don't know. It's just, I, I don't like what they've done with this. And on top of that, we currently have the issue of these upgrade kits each cost £25. That's Great British Pound, GBP. And... That's ridiculous. When I believe the base contemptor, the plastic contemptor, costs thirty-seven fifty, I believe. Um, yeah, twenty-five pounds, nearly the price of another contemptor, close to, is not worth it. It's not worth it for these incomplete upgrade kits because you know if they included you know a little bit of leg armor and like the shoulder pads, I'd I'd maybe go yeah they're worth twenty-five. You know, if they just included that little bit more just to keep the detailing around but they don't and it just it looks it looks so weird having even the best ones like they, they show the salamanders of legion and uh blood angels like and they look great but they're also the ones that don't require any more detailing past the torso like they they are designs that are specifically designed to not have anything beyond they have like borders and stuff like that where the design will not continue and shouldn't continue it makes sense I just don't think that that's the case, though, for some of the other ones, like um, the Thousand Sons and the Word Bearers, the Raven Guard, which, unfortunately, are all factions that I... Well, Word Bearers are so, but, like, Thousand Sons and Raven Guard are, are my factions, Alpha Legion as well. I, I, I just don't think it's worth the price, and I don't think it looks that good beyond, you know, a handful of them. It just... I don't know. It's, it's, it's questionable, and, you know... We've already we the reason why we know the price is because the first six that were announced have already been put on pre order. These twelve are probably gonna be put on pre order in like a month. And I, d I just don't understand why they would do it the way they have. But yeah, that's really all I can rant about for this. It's it's just it's so stupid to me. I don't really get it. But uh yeah, if you're interested in twelve more Contempt of Dread not all great packs, here they are, twenty five pounds each. Get out your get out your money book, I suppose. And finishing off, as always, with the Rumor Engine, it's some Spears. Um, they're probably Chaos, they have runes in them, 
Um, there's not really much to say about them. They, they, they're, they're nice spears. There's two spears next to each other. I honestly could guess anything and be wrong. All right. Because it could be 30k, it could be 40k, it could be Blood Bowl, it could be, you know, Age of Sigma, it could be literally anything. Because it's spears with runes in them, and that kind of applies to every element of Warhammer. So, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw it out there. It's probably something Chaos. It's probably something AOS. And I I can't really go any further than that. Runes on spears. Fair enough. But uh, yeah, in any case, that is going to be it for this video. So I hope you enjoyed. If you did, make sure to like it, subscribe if you're new, and turn and ring the bell so you never miss an upload. Otherwise, that's going to be it from me. Tell me what you think of all the stuff we've talked about in this video below, in the comments section below even. And uh, yeah, that's going to be it from me. So thanks for watching. I hope to see you next time. Bye. Look at the screen. You'll be fine. Cultures of the same. I just want to tell